everybody. It's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Um, hope everybody's having a great day. Uh, I just want to actually touch on a topic that sort of kind of was uh, triggered, a memory that was triggered uh, by the celebration of Malcolm X's uh, birthday uh, recently. And, and I thought about it and I decided I wasn't going to say anything and I definitely didn't want to say it on his birthday. That's his birthday. Let people do their thing. Um, but now that it's a few days behind us, I'm going to talk about something I think that needs to be addressed. Some people will like it, some people won't. You know me. Uh, I'm not here for the likes. Uh, I've been about true for over 30 years. Uh, before I get started, uh, you know the routine. Look, we're in the midst of a fundraiser. We need your support. Look in the description box at the top of the description box and there are the links there to show some love, show some support for the work we've been doing for 30 years plus. Uh, and we'll continue to do as long as I'm breathing. And hopefully I will inspire enough people to take this on long after I'm gone. Uh, but anyway, that's that. Uh, when every year during uh, the celebration of Malcolm X's birthday, this particular memory comes up. Uh, as you know, uh, as much as I teach, I'm a student. And uh, one of my favorite teachers... It's Dr. John Hiring Clark. And I remember Dr. Clark being asked, will we ever have another Malcolm X? Um, and his answer wasn't what I was going to be expected. The normal answer is there'll never be another Malcolm X, blah, blah, blah. His answer was, I don't think black people deserve another Malcolm X. What did you do with the first one? Now, again, in true form, another classic quote from this intellectual juggernaut. He, you can find, I don't know how many of them, but this one was huge and not as popular as I only debate my equals all others I teach, but it's up there. Now, on the surface, just like I only debate my equals, it looks like he's just taking a shot you know, and it is what it is. No, deep when you look under it, it's 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 huge because it lays out something. Now, while we have never had, nor will we ever have another Malcolm X, by the way, uh, I don't really do the hero thing anymore, claim hero. People ask me who my hero is now. I say the version of myself I see five years from now. I can be that person. I'm never going to be Malcolm X. I'm never going to be Martin. I'm never going to be Dr. Naeem Akbar. I'm never going to be Amos Wilson. And I shouldn't desire to be. I should want to be the best version of myself. And so that's my hero. Not even my pops, who is the dude that I look to as the strongest man I've ever known. But I can't be him. But what I can be is the best version of myself. But in the idea of heroes, Malcolm has always been that guy for me. Um... While I have a great appreciation for the work that Dr. King did, especially in the last couple of years of his life, uh, his charisma, uh, his ability to uh, speak, which is a passion of mine, uh, just the heart of who the man uh, Malcolm was has always reached to me. So that if I had to say there was a hero, it would be him. While there will never, ever, ever be another Malcolm. There has been a Dr. John Harry Clark. There has, there has been a Dr. Tony Browder. There's been a Dr. Asa Hilliard. There's been a Dr. Naeem Agbar, a Dr. Amos Wilson, a Dr. Colin Muhammad, Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, uh, Dr. Yosef ben uh Dr. Yazid Quarry. Uh, and on down the line, there's been all of these juggernauts in intellectual uh, engagement in the sense of breaking down the black enigma. Uh, there's been so much doc, Dr. Uh, uh, Joy DeGroote, Dr. Howard Stevenson, just so much work uh, unfolding. Dr. Um, I mean, it's just so many. 
uh, you know, uh, my ace, Dr. Michael T. Blanchett, my, excuse me, Michael K. Blanchett, just so many people who have given their lives to understanding, disseminating, and offering solutions to the black enigma. And the question is, what have we done with it? What have we done with what we've been given? Dr. Wilson gave us uh, the Chris Theory of Color Confrontation and the ISIS Papers. Dr. Amos Wilson, volume after volumes of lectures and books. Dr. Naeem Bars, break, not Dr. Naeem Bars, breaking the chains of psychological slavery. Uh, and I can go on down the line. Dr. Yosef Ben Yakuda took us took us into the world of Egyptology and and and, and everything behind it. Dr. Tony Brown, the father behind him. Dr. Yazid Query, father behind him, and so on. Uh, Ranuku Rashidi, uh, Dr. Ranuku Rashidi, follow behind him. All these great, brilliant minds. And what we have, what have we done with it? Still in last place, socioeconomically. Still in last place in academic uh, consistency and achievement. Still in last place in political clout and power. Still whining and complaining about what they're doing to us without taking any action to do anything for ourselves. The answers have been given over and over and over and over and over again. What have we done with them? Absolutely nothing. So what makes us think we deserve another Malcolm, another Martin, another uh, Medgar, another, I can go on and on, another um, what? I mean, just, it's so many brilliant minds. I, I lose myself in the pool of this brilliance. And yet, at, I mean, just total, I don't even know what the word is, but I know we have failed to take what we've been given and put any, any, any really true consistent united effort into taking it and making something of it. We've been given the blueprint over and over and over again. We've been given the blueprint over and over again. We've been given insight. We've been given solutions. I, I brought the world of epigenetics and laid it at your feet. I showed you beyond uh, the Influ its influence on multi-generational transmission of trauma to its influence on diseases like cancer, lupus, and so much more. Uh, Open the gates to adverse childhood experiences. Talked about the influence of trauma on a biological level and not just on a mental and emotional level. I have given you so much into the world of human psychology and epigenetics. I've also brought you into the world of the systematic miseducation of black youth in America. Volume after volume, 26 full length books, probably another hundred short, uh, short length books, over a thousand academic articles, and on and on and on, lecture after lecture after lecture, close to 10,000 videos. What has been done with it? Blacks spend more time trying to find what's wrong than they do trying to find what's right and do something with it. That is an absolute symptom of trauma. The brain at its very um, ancient and most uh, primitive and instinctive level is looking for the problem because the ancient brain was designed to find the problem and alert you so that you can fight or run. That's where you get the fight or flight response. So the reptilian brain, uh, the limbic system, and its impact on Abigdala and on the whole nine is all about that. So then, in order to get past that, you've got to change the triggers. You've got to address all of that so that you can tap into the frontal lobe. Uh, the frontal cortex and the prefrontal cortex so that you can get into impulse control, reasoning, rationale, problem solving, uh, and all of the other planning and organization, all the other things that are controlled by, by this unbelievably large and potent part of the brain that we tend to abandon the moment that we get emotionally charged, the moment that something goes wrong. When we should be banding together, we are not when we should be organizing, we are not. When we should be creating agenda strategies and plans, we are not. On the site, there's a Blueprint 1.0, uh, a complete outline of black empowerment. 
I didn't just create it. I created it and I took it before the elders and got their cosign on it. Uh, people go to it, they click the like button. Getting people to actually get involved, whole other thing. Malcolm laid down his life on character. Now granted, there was a whole bunch of BS going on behind the scenes and on top with how he how he met his demise. Same thing with King. Uh, how they met, it, 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 it's really ugly, but it's the truth. We need to understand that because that's a part of the problem. A lot of the people we're looking at as the answer are the problem. And a lot of people we are calling the problem are the answer. Sounds, you know, cliche ish and easy to uh, uh, easy spin, but no, it's the truth. We spend way too much time trying to discredit people, trying to break them down, trying to feel good about tell, talking about what's wrong with someone else. And we're not looking at my whole thing is I stopped being enamored by mess, the messenger as a kid because like I said my hero was Malcolm and so when I started to see what was going on I started to see that everybody had flaws everybody has a past everybody makes mistakes and if I'm going to judge whether I'm going to follow something on the person being perfect I'm never going to stick with anyone long enough to get anything done so I learned how to uh, disassociate the message from the messenger so I start validating messages not people I started to look at, can I validate what they're saying? Can I research and find what they're saying? Is what they're saying true? If, if that's the case, well, who they are, that's them. They've got to work that out. Now, I may not want to hang out with them. I may not want to be directly associated with But if you bring in truth, I've got to acknowledge the truth. And the problem is we don't have that. We've got some people we hate because of something someone else said about them. And then uh, we rode with it without ever validating it. And we keep regurgitating a lot of times, a lot, sometimes it may have been the truth, but we keep regurgitating that stuff and we're missing the stuff that's coming to us that we need because we don't know how to get from underneath the rudimentary behaviors of immaturity that lead us to focus on people more than messages. And until we get that, we're going to miss it. No, there's never going to be another Malcolm. But like Dr. Clark said, we don't deserve one. We don't deserve everything we've gotten after Malcolm. Much less another Malcolm, another Martin, another Mega, another Marcus Garvey. We, we, we don't deserve them. We don't deserve that because we aren't taking what we're given and doing anything with it. Rest in peace, brother uh, Malcolm. Um... Uh, Rest in peace, Yosef, Dr. Yosef Ben Yaku, Dr. John Harry Clark, and I'm going Dr. Francis Chris Wilson, Dr. Amos Wilson, Dr. Khalid Muhammad. I'm going down the line of all these great people who influenced me. Uh, man, how could I forget? Uh, one of the elders I actually reached out to and, and, and spoke with, with about the blueprint, Dr. Claude Anderson. We got sucked into a debate about who he was and went, went to go attack a brother that has done nothing will go hard in the paint bringing something is he perfect no does he have all the answers no has he always been right no but tell me how many people have put in enough energy effort and research to actually sit up and break down and explain with in detail and not from an emotionally charged perspective where he's at where's wrong i've had these conversations and there have been disagreements respectful though but here we are and I will tell you, there are people that have actually that. If I said their name, you will automatically know them. They're bigger, way bigger than Dr. Rick. That have handled Dr. Rick wrong, and you've never heard about it, nor will you. Why? Because it's bigger than me. It's bigger than me. Could I have taken that and actually started beef and then created a larger following and probably created more channels for revenue? Absolutely. That doesn't benefit the whole. That's not how I get down. I got to live with everything I do, good and bad, and I'm not perfect, but I'm not going to sit up and make me bigger than the movement because I have the capacity to generate and take care of my family without lapses in integrity. Like to me, going after somebody and starting to be for the sole pur purpose of expanding my brand, that's not the brand I want. I don't want a beefing brand. I don't want a brand that is big front and center two black men with the capacity or two you know whoever it is with two complex 
but with the capacity to be highly influential in solving problems within that community, becoming a part of the problem. I, 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 I'm not going to do that. But I, I, I have to sit up and, and agree with Dr. Clark until we prove that we deserve something of that magnitude. And, and to me, we've had it, but we don't appreciate it. And we have a a, a, a declining level of, of appreciation for that type of impact, for that type of intellect, for that type of passion, for that type of force, for that type of manhood and masculinity. We, 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 we've lost our, 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 our savor of it. We want people to say the things that make us feel good. We want people to rub us on our backs and, 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 and tell us all the bullshit we're doing that's stupid is right. We don't want real people to step up and give us real messages and hold us accountable to a standard and a behavior. We want to sit up and whine and complain about white supremacy while doing absolutely nothing to stop it. And until we get out of that, it's absolutely nothing that anybody steps up and takes the leadership role can do. You got people that don't do jack shit for the black community having the audacity to say who can't be a leader or who can't act in a leadership role. We need more than one leader, first of all. We don't need some, you know, that, that, that's that been one of our problems. I'm not going to get deep into that. It's been one of our problems. We don't need that. What we need are people who step up. But we have people who have done jack shit, absolutely nothing for the black community, thinking they have the right uh, 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 the place to sit up and talk about who doesn't deserve to be at if you if you don't have your ass up there doing something you don't have a say so if you don't want to follow sit your ass down but what we do need are people who are willing to look and see the people who are working and sit up and say who do I want to join with I don't I'm not feeling him well who do you feel because you got to get behind somebody you got to sit up and care about this enough to sit up and say, I can see where this is going. I can see what he's talking about. I can see this. Okay, cool. This is what I'm going to do. So that's my challenge. That's my response. Uh, I, I, I'm 100% with Dr. Clark. We don't deserve anything close to a Malcolm. We running amok on the people who are trying to help us now. So that's my take on it. Take it and do what you want to with it. Those of you who actually believe in the work that I do, please support the work. Look in the description box and do that. But as a whole, we've got work to do. On that note, I'm out.